DJ to the record and I wanna dance with my baby. Hey guys, I'm Jess and we are at Camping World and we're actually gonna show you uh, our top 10 products that you are going to need when you get a brand new RV. So these are just the basic products. These are nothing special. It is really hard for me not to dance right now because this music is like really good, but these are gonna be the top 10 products you're gonna need that are not extra. Just like the basics of when you get a brand new RV, you need to make sure that you have these items to function in your camper. So we're gonna walk around, we're gonna give you a couple of options, we're gonna show you what our favorite brands are from those specific items, um, and just kinda make it a little bit easy for you. So come on, let's go hang out and see what you guys are gonna need, and stay until the end because the last thing that we show you is not going to be what you expect. All right, let's go. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a sewer hose because you need a place for all of your gray and your black water to go. And when you come to Camping World, um, you are going to see that there is an entire aisle of sewer hoses. So we've tried out quite a few over the course of time and we really like this uh, Camco RhinoFlex. I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong with any of them. The RhinoFlex Extreme is a little bit more sturdy, but the reason why we like these is because they are super sturdy. Um, we have seen people get holes in their sewer hose, and so we really wanted to make sure that we prevented that. We have, what, two 20-foot sewer hoses? And then we have two 20-foot and then... Uh, we have two 10s and a 15. Two 10s and a 15. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have enough sewer hose that if your sewer connection is further away from your camper at different campgrounds, you can add more sewer hose to make sure that it reaches. So I feel like with, was that two 10s and a 15? So 35 feet. You have 99% of campgrounds we have not had a problem. Yeah, so that's what we have um, and that's what we would recommend. And then you can also get some attachments. So if you have two um, black and two gray tanks like we do, we have this so that we can hook them both up. And this is something that Dove really likes because you can see what's coming out. Um, I don't think he just really likes looking at what's coming out, but just making sure there's no light clogs and seeing when it's finished and that sort of thing. Am I right? Yeah, I love seeing what's coming out. <laughs> I, I love seeing something coming out. <laughs> okay, so it's not clogged. Yeah. So you can see what's going on. So just so you can see what's going on. So this is number one, if you have these attachments are optional, but you definitely need a sewer hose. These are just kind of like an upgrade. So let's go over to the next thing. The next thing you're gonna need is a water hose. So we're gonna talk to you about specifically what water hose you're going to need. So let's go. So it looks like there's not a lot of water hoses right here, but we can go ahead and talk about I think I saw some more over there. So basically when you get a water hose for camping, you need to make sure that you are getting a drinking water safe water hose. Typically the blue water hoses, aqua fresh says drinking water hose. Um, this one does say it's drinking water safe. It has a blue strip. And this one is also drinking water safe. So it looks like they don't have any that are not drinking water safe. These are just like basic water hoses, but the most important thing is to get one that is drinking water safe. Uh, we really like the Zero G brand, and I think they have them over there um, because they collapse and they take up a lot less space and they're not as heavy. Um, but honestly, any basic water hose that is drinking water safe is perfect. How many feet of water hose do we have? We have. We have a hundred foot. Oh, it's like in one water hose? And we have two 50 foot. Okay, and yeah. you use both every time? Yes. Okay. So because of the filter that we hook up to. Oh, okay, so that's the next thing we need to talk about. So basically you go into the filter and then from the filter into the camper, so you need two separate water hoses. Yes, okay, we, we cool. could get away with you know, two 25s most campgrounds, but okay. for us, we. We just and we them. also do, so we do have three technically, three water hoses technically, because you have that green one for... All for flushing the tanks out. So yeah. yes, we do have, and that's another 50 foot hose. Yeah, so we have three uh, water hoses, one's for flushing out the tanks, um, which is nice so there's no cross contamination and we're not using that water hose for anything drinking purposes because it's flushing out the black tank. So you do need water hoses. So you can go with a really inexpensive route. You probably don't need as many feet as we have. That seems, that's like a lot. Yeah, we have a lot. Um, so we probably don't need as many feet as we have, but you definitely need drinking water safe water hoses. And the next thing you're gonna need is a water filter. So let's go find those. Okay, so on the same aisle is the water hoses. There's quite a few options. 
uh, for water hoses. We have used um, a couple of them. We've used this one, we've used this one. Um, and this one looks like a dual stage water filter, which we have something very similar to this. Um, we've pretty much used everything. You can't really go wrong with like the water hoses. Um, you just wanna make sure that when you are hooking up to the water connections at a campground, you do have something to filter out the water because there's gonna be a lot of sediments in there and every single camp campground you go to is going to have different types of water and you need to make sure that you are keeping your family safe and if you're drinking out of the water um, hose, then you know you want to make sure you get all that stuff out but even for showers and that sort of thing so you don't get all that sediment in your pipe so um, any water hose if I were to pick anyone from this right here I would probably pick um, this EVO um, or this EVO X2 um, just to provide a little bit more um, filtration so the next thing on our list number four is a surge protector uh, let's go water regulator since we're here oh yes okay good call so yeah. a pressure regulator that's number four on our list is a pressure regulator and they're right here they should be over here right there that's where they are so you need a pressure regulator because the pressure psi that's double saying the same thing isn't it pressure the psi the water psi coming out is different in every single campground. And yes. so you don't want it to be too high because if it is, it will burst your pipes. Yes. Okay, I'm looking it up to make sure that I say all this correctly. So um, the we have one that has a gauge on it. And so that way you can see like what the water pressure is. When you have a water filter, it is definitely gonna slow down the water pressure quite a bit. Um, but this is definitely something that's super nice to have on hand because you don't wanna, it's very inexpensive and a very simple way to make sure that your pipes are not busted in your camper because that would be really horrible and yeah, a that. super, super preventative thing that you can do. Very you cool. can get this one that has the regulator on it or this is a uh, regulator that does not have the gauge on yeah, that's it. That's just a fixed regulator. It's just a fixed regulator, but you, um, and this one's a lot less expensive. So you have options as far as these go, but definitely make sure you get a pressure regulator. Okay, so search for is super important. So let's go find that. I'd say more, more important than a water regulator. Oh, for sure. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna need is a surge protector. This is probably the most important thing that you're gonna put on your camper because the power source at all the RV parks are going to vary dramatically. And if there's a power outage, you do not want to fry the electrical systems in your camper. So we have this power watchdog. Um, we have this one specifically, the Smart RV Surge Protector. Um, there are obviously other options. This one has like a remote with look, which looks super cool. You could get these at a wide variety of prices, but this is definitely something that you need to have um, when you get your brand new RV. And then moving on to the, what is this, the sixth item on our list? I don't even know where we're at right now. It might be six. Right? It might be the six. Uh, you are going to need some adapters for your elect electrical cord. So we have a 50 amp camper, which means that we run on 50 amp, but you can take that same power cord. If there is only 30 amp plug up, like plugins at your RV park, you can get an adapter to go from 50 amp to 30 amp. So this is a 50 to 30 amp um, adapter. So they call it a dog bone. By they, I mean Dub and other people on the internet call it a dog bone. Kind of looks like a dog bone. But basically, you're going to plug this in to your um, your power cord, and then you're going to plug this into the 30 amp connection that is at your campground. So if something happens to the 50 amp or there is no 50 amp available, you will still be able to have power. And then another thing that you are going to need is a 30 to 15. So both of these. So you can actually attach this to the 30 amp connector and you can plug this into a traditional outlet with the, can you see that? Two plugs. Okay, so you can plug this into like a traditional outlet. So we have used this specifically, for example, when we were camping at our family's house and obviously they're not gonna have 50 or 30 amp service. So we were able to just run basic things in the camper with this 15 amp connection. So these are going to be, I feel like it's not something that you need right away if you are, you know, especially like limited with your budget, but you are going to run into a time, especially if you're using camper, your camper a lot, you are going to run into a time where you're going to need these two items. Um, if you have a 30 amp 
camper, then you're gonna maybe need to go to like a 50 amp dog bone. You can do that, right? Uh, you can. 30 to 50, yeah. And then, so just whatever, you know, your options are for what sort of amp your specific camper has. So most of the larger campers are 50 amp. Um, some of the smaller like travel trailers are 30 amp. Um, I don't know of a single camper that's 15, but yep. So let's move on to the next item, which is a power cord extension. So the next thing you're gonna need is a power cord extension. So your camper does come with a power cord, but you are definitely gonna find yourself in a position where your electrical box is too far away from your camper and you're going to need an extension cord. And it's one of those things that you wanna have on hand so that way when it does happen, you don't have to go try to hunt one down. For example, this specific camping world does not have the 50 amp extensions in stock, so you would have to order it online. So you can get any of these items on Camping World's website, campingworld.com, um, and you can have them shipped directly to you. So this is the next item that you're going to need when you get a new camper. And we're gonna talk about leveling blocks and wheel chocks next, and they are over this way. So let's go check it out. Okay, so these like are like the yellow blocks. So they're the Legos, this is what people call them. Um, they're just two by two leveling blocks and I recommend getting two packets of these because especially if you prefer camping at um, campgrounds, like state, camp, state park campgrounds or county parks or national parks, a lot of those places have uneven campsites and you are probably gonna need more than one package. Um, we started out with two packs and we use them quite a bit, right? Yeah. Both packets. Yeah. Yeah. So and we also had six points of contact on the ground too. Six checks. So Okay, that makes a big difference. So if you only if you have a smaller camper and you've only got four, four. then you could probably get away with having one pack. Yeah. Do you think? I think so. Okay. So um basically, yeah, you're gonna need these. This is like definitely something that you're gonna need when you're leveling out your camper because you don't want to put the uh, pads directly on the ground uh, because it can melt into the pavement, you can ruin your jacks, you get, dent get dents in it. And so you want to make sure to not only protect your camper, but also you're gonna find yourself in a position where you are not gonna be able to put your jacks all the way down and you're going to need help leveling your camper with the help of these leveling blocks. So definitely get these. Now, another really important thing you're gonna need is wheel chocks to make sure that when you are you know, unhitching your camper that it does not roll away on you. So um, let's go find those and we'll show you guys exactly what you're gonna need. This camping world's set up pretty different than like the other camping worlds I think we've been to. But that's one nice thing about camper worlds is typically they have everything in stock. So if you find yourself like out and about and you like need something, you can always come to like a camping world location and get what you need. All right, so basic wheel chalk, this is six bucks. Um, so, I mean, really all you need is something simple like that. We do like to get a more heavy duty wheel chalk. Um, so we have something more similar to this. They do have black. I do not recommend getting black wheel chalks because these are so easy to leave behind. This is probably like the number one thing that gets left behind at campgrounds is wheel chalks. We see it all the time. All the time. So I recommend getting yellow or orange, something that you're going to see. Um, whenever you're pulling away that you, if you forget it. Um, also, there are expiration dates somewhere on wheel chocks. Um, this is not something that I particularly have paid attention to, but somebody that we know, RV Miles, actually said that there is um, expir expiration dates because it is made out of plastic. So make sure to pay attention to the expiration dates. So um, this is a super inexpensive way to make sure that your camper does not roll off when you unhitch it. And especially if you're at like an incline, um, you want to make sure that you get two, one to put on the front and one to put on the back of the wheel. Um, you only need to do one. You don't have to do each and every wheel. Um, just two for the entire camper is good. And this also does help a little bit with movement on the inside after you've already gotten leveled. Just kind of like makes the camper a little bit more secure. All right, the last thing on our list is probably gonna be the most surprising, but I feel like it's probably one of the more important things, especially if you're camping in humid climates. So let's go find it so you can see what it is. All right, okay. Oh, is it? Yes, yes. you were right, I was real, I'm really impressed. 
All right, so you're gonna need a dehumidifier. So you can get like those really big dehumidifiers. We have a, a really large one because when we, we just have a large camper and we're living in ours full time, but especially like if you are keeping your stationary and you're not, you're not having it plugged in, you're just like during storage, you want to make sure, especially if you're in humid climates, that you have a dehumidifier. You can get these um, little ones that do not need to be plugged in. Basically, they just have the beads in it that soak up the moisture. Uh, we do still keep these. Actually, I think while we're here, we're gonna grab a couple because we keep these in both the bathrooms and they fill up constantly. We also keep these small ones, uh, one of these small ones underneath the bed and the storage underneath the, the master bedroom and we keep them in the closet near the washer and dryer because the washer and dryer also lets out a lot of humidity. Um, and this is going to prevent mold and mildew buildup in a camper and campers are so susceptible to mold and mildew and you really, this is a really inexpensive thing that you can do to make sure that you do not have the mold and mildew buildup in your camper. Um, so this is the very last thing that you are going to need um, when you first start out with your brand new camper. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check the description to find links to all these products and go to campingworld.com and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.